Welcome to the shop. Hope you're having a great day. All right, so in the last video I did where I was just speaking, you guys said you wanted to hear some past stories. So uh, I got a whole bunch. As I'm walking, I'm writing down ideas and stuff all the way from 94 Woodstock to, uh, well, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> we'll leave that for a surprise for when they come. <laughs> Let me touch on last video first. I mean, the title was great, you know, Jealousy versus Creativity, but uh, my jealousy is a little bit different because I have more of a problem with YouTube, and I'll get into that because, you know, the makers, I, I mean, it's not just night makers, you know, I'm always looking at everyone else's stuff, and a lot of people say, well, just don't look at the other makers, but, you know, a lot of these guys I consider friends, and hey, I'm not gonna stick myself in a spot where I'm not learning, so, you know, even beginners, if you're like five, 10 years down the line, there might be someone that's only like a year in that does something that they don't even know they're doing. It's like, man, that's something you gotta learn from, you know? So I watch all kinds of guys. Now, let me just start with the YouTube thing and get on it and explain a little bit about, you know, a lot of the problems with YouTube are my fault that I didn't know of. Because when I was coming up, you know, I used to play the game. Like, if you go back and watch my old videos, I did the 120 frames per second and the slow motion and, you know, the bars and all that. And the more you play the game and the more you get caught up into it, the more you try to get everyone to watch your stuff. And you're always, and it's always changing. So, man, you get this one thing down and all of a sudden the algorithm changes and, you know, you need something else. Now everyone's doing shorts and stuff like that and putting all this extra stuff in. And man, it, it's just, it, it takes away creativity when you're trying to keep up with everyone else. And I know it's kind of a uh, opposite of what I was saying in the last video, which I'll put up here so you can watch and see. But man, it's like uh, when you're always trying to keep up and it's not other people you're trying to keep up with actually, in this case, it's YouTube. And uh, I got to the point where I was always caught up. And then, you know, I got put on the partner program and all that and got monetized and all that. So every dollar I made, I was like, oh man, I'm just gonna put it back in to YouTube. Now, what I didn't know, and if, if you guys are doing this and do have these big numbers, you gotta be careful. Cause I was using Google ads. You know, you figure Google is part of YouTube or YouTube is part of Google. So if you use Google Ads to promote your stuff, you should be okay. But uh, YouTube took away my partner program because they said, oh, well, uh, you're using other things to build up your viewers. So it's, it's you know, not honest, but which doesn't make sense. It's not like I'm buying bots or buying likes or buying views, which I know a lot of people do. You know, you can get a thousand views or a thousand likes or whatever that. But I never did that. I went straight to the source. The thing is, back then you couldn't be like, uh, oh, I'm a knife maker. You know, I'm promoting knives because they saw it as weapons. So I'd always promote my stuff as tools. But that's not what they said. They didn't, they didn't demonetize my stuff because of this. They said I was uh, fluffing the numbers or something. However, they put it in their, you know, legal terms. So, you know, I see a lot of guys with like even 10, 15,000 subscribers, but they're getting these big numbers on every video. Now like Tyler Knifeworks, he's gotten huge numbers on one or two videos that hit the algorithm and go. But there's other guys that I see that get these big numbers every video. And their numbers, you know, are huge. And you know, I understand it. You want to promote your stuff and Man, it gets addicting because you get all these numbers coming in. Like if you look, it was probably a year ago, I was doing like one to 2,000 subscribe, I mean, one to 2,000 views, and all of a sudden I dropped down to like 400. And that's when they took it away and I stopped putting money into it because I wasn't making money in. Which is another reason I don't think they're really promoting me because they're not making money and all that, you know, so. I get frustrated. I'm the kind of person that lets things build up and build up and build up and then explode. So every couple months you'll see me rant and complain about something, you know, if it's, you know, jealousy or YouTube's doing this to me. And 
But, you know, and I appreciate you guys saying a lot of you guys stepped up in the comments last video and were like, oh man, you can't give it up or just stop watching other life makers or stop doing this or, you know. I love what I'm doing, obviously. I don't get any money for YouTube, but I sit there and do all these videos, three camera shots and all that because I love doing it. I make knobs because I love making knobs, you know. If you watch me on Instagram, I just started getting into tattooing. I had these tattoo kits from like 99. It was all my, man, I want to build a machine. Even if I don't start tattooing, I want to start building tattoo machines. <laughs> but no one uses coil machines anymore. But it would be fun to do. I digress. Now, another thing that really keeps me going, I keep looking down. <laughs> another thing that keeps me going with knife making, a lot of these guys that I've looked up to and I learned off of watching YouTube and, and, and uh, man, they've become friends with me and they, and even though I don't forge and even though I don't make the masks and all this, it seems like I get respect from a lot of knife makers that have been doing it for years longer than me and they, you know, have their ABS and stuff like that. So, man, that makes me feel great, you know. I, you know, I've, I've kind of gotten to the whole forging thing. I don't, I'm, I have no passion to forge. If I learned it, it would be to say I could do it and I'd probably never do it again. You know, I'm with my OCD, when I either get locked into something or I don't want to do it. You know, and forging just doesn't seem like uh, something I'm that interested in. You know, it would be fun to learn. And you, man, I look up to the guys that do it, but it's not something I have a passion for. Anyway, I digress. Story time. Sit down, boys and girls. <laughs> time, for, time for some fun stories. All right. So in my arm video where I explain everything that happened to my arm, I say I have no criminal charges, except when I was 18, I got a drunk in public. So that's why I labeled this video jail time. I've actually been to jail twice, but uh, you'll see why I only got one charge. If you guys watch my videos, you, go, you guys know I don't wear shoes a lot of the time. And both times I got arrested, I wasn't wearing shoes. And the second time, was even funnier because wait till I tell you what I was wearing. But man, the, the circumstances, the circumstances of the second arrest was completely insane. But uh, the first one, it was when my dad was uh, going through his uh, heart surgery. He had a zipper all the way from here, all the way down to his foot. I guess back then, this was like 89. Yeah, because it was 89 because I was only 18. And uh, yeah, I guess they took your arteries out and replaced them. So he had a zipper all the way from his foot. And that dude, he just didn't care. He would go out in shorts, no shirt, and uh, you know, just rock it. He always worked, you know. In fact, that's how he died when uh, he was out shoveling snow because we couldn't stop him from working because he'd get too depressed and he'd just hate life. So it's like, well, let him work. And you know, it was like a couple inches of snow and. They said he was gone before he hit the ground. One of my best friends at the time, he was two years younger than me. So he was 16, I was 18, and the guitarist from my band that you know basically died in my arms just dropped us off at my friend's house. The guy that was 16. I'm making this all confusing. And we, man, we used to drink like, I didn't drink much, but when I did, we drank like Wild Irish Rose. You know, we just call it like the blood of the lamb. <laughs> You know, and we just, you know, I didn't drink beer ever. If I drank, it was like, you know, Jim Beam and stuff like that. Because I could drink a lot, but I don't like to taste alcohol. I'm getting off topic. So me and my friend were just finished like a bottle of Wild Irish Rose. And we were wasted. And we were all, you know, my dad was in the hospital with his heart surgery. And his dad died when he was like uh, 12, you know, which was like four years earlier. So we were drunk, wasted, crying, and, you know, just being buddies and best friends and, and wasted drunk. And cops were called, of course, which, man, we were, you know, of course, being loud and obnoxious. And, uh, man, so cops take me to jail and take him home. 
Now he told me that he was like yelling at the cops, you know, take me to jail, take me to jail, because he wanted to come with me, but he was, you know, he was a minor. Luckily, we didn't have any alcohol on me, but they charged me with uh, drinking underage and uh, drunk in public. Or wait, what was it? No, I guess I did have the bottle of uh, Wild Irish Rose because they charged me with drinking under the age of 21 and possession of alcohol and drunk in public. So I had like three charges. And uh, but all I had on was like a tank top and shorts, no shoes. You know, I'm hard headed. If you guys don't know by now, I'm hard headed. And I didn't want to call my parents and be like, pick me up, I went to jail last night. I'm, a, I'm tough, you know? <laughs> I'm a dumbass. I had to walk all the way home, which is like three, four miles. You know, you're 18, you don't care. But I was in bare feet. And uh, I live in the suburbs, but it's still, you know, a lot of traffic and all that. I just remember walking home in bare feet being like, man, no sidewalks back then. <laughs> you know, walking by the highway and all that. Like, man, but whew. You know, so I deserved to go to jail that time because I was a drunk idiot. <laughs> but so yeah, that's the one charge that's on my record. Now the second time, like I say, I don't like drinking beer and all that, but I did drink here and there. I just didn't like it. You know, I liked, well, this is before I got into my addiction, but I still liked other drugs to, uh, you know, I like things that are faster, pills, anything. I didn't like drinking. Drinking, I mean, I have a high tolerance, so, you know, I did everything else. <laughs> My friends were drinking. I, I guess I probably had a couple beers, but they were, this is when I lived in Virginia Beach. And this was like around 91, 90, 91, I lived in Virginia Beach. And if you remember, that's when they had like the fight the power things and they had the riots down there in Virginia Beach. This was like a year after that. This was, yeah, the next year. And in the winter in Virginia Beach, you can rent hotels for like, uh, man, it's cheap. It's like 200 bucks a week, you know? And then when the season comes in, they're like 100 bucks a day. So yeah, we were renting a hotel. It was like me and two of my friends. I, we scraped up money somehow and got a case of beer and they were drunk and my one friend Man, we used to call him Biscuit. He was like burnt, burnt to a crisp, like a, a crispy biscuit, you know? <laughs> and this dude, now he was like criminal mind, you know? And he just didn't give a you know what. <laughs> so we get drunk and all of a sudden he disappears. Cause we're like down to like a six pack of beer. All of a sudden we hear this ruckus outside the hotel and the cops, he tried to steal a case of beer. He just walked into 7-Eleven, which was right behind the hotel. He grabbed their case of beer and just walked out with it. So what happens is the cops catch up to him and they just start beating the shit out of him. I mean, beat him. he was beaten so bad. When we got to the jail, I didn't, if it wasn't for his clothes, I wouldn't have recognized him. That's how bad they beat him. But dumbass Dave, you know, I'm in my shorts, in a tank top, Dumbass Dave yells out, police brutality, stop beating him, you know, stop, you know, whatever, you know, Dave has to open his mouth. So they come up and they grab me and the other guys there and uh, we all get taken in for drunk in public, right? I wasn't even drinking. I maybe had two beers, so I, they didn't test us, of course, or not anyway. So the funny part of the whole story is my shirt said, I may be drunk, but you're ugly and I'll be sober in the morning. And my shirt said, I'll have what the man on the floor is having. Remember those stupid like beach shirts from the nineties if you're not old? Yeah, man, all the cops got the biggest kick out of that. And when they gave us our blankets, we had them around and man, once again, I had no shoes on, but uh, we called someone and, and to come pick us up, but man. Yeah, so, you know, we get drunk in public. This dude's sitting to the left of me, and I, you know, we're all handcuffed to the wall. This dude looks right at the cop. He, I don't even know this guy. The dude looks right at the cop and just spits right in the cop's face. 
and the cop just starts laying into him. I'm like, oh man, you know, my one good friend has been beaten so I don't even recognize him. Now this dude that I'm sitting next to, I don't even know, just spit in this cop's face. And I'm like, oh man. I mean, this dude's like, they took like three other cops to pull him off of him. And you know, I can't go anywhere. Cause I'm, oh. But anyway, so by the time my court case came up, I had moved back up, you know, DC area. And I went down, I had to go to court. So I'm standing there and uh, two, three people go in front of me. And I guess the cop didn't show up or something. And the judge is like, you know, the first three people go up and they're like, okay, we got to reschedule you. And I go up and uh, the judge is like, okay, uh, what do you want to do? Since, there's, you know, the cop's not here. I was like, look, I, I can't come back. I don't live here. And the judge is like, dismissed. And I was like, yes. Then every person after me is like, you know, dismissed, dismissed, dismissed. Cause they said the same thing I did. <laughs> man, those first three people, I guess they're lucky they left because, man, they would have been pissed. They could have just gotten off. <laughs> All right, so that's enough story time. Uh, yeah, my website's up in the cards. It's the first down in the description. Make sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell, do all that stuff. You know, I got to throw that stuff in since I'm not making any money off of YouTube. I got to make money off of everything else. Unfortunately, knife makers are the ones that watch these videos, so uh, they're making their own knives. They don't need to buy mine. <laughs> Look at you guys got me all riled up. Wait till I get into the real juicy stuff. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching all that good stuff. And uh, let's see, I'll put the playlist. Maybe I'll make a stories playlist. And I'll put that up here. I'll have my arm up here and uh, last video, all that stuff. And my website's right there. Hope y'all having a great day. And as always, take it easy.